Welcome to Rome. This is The Bittersweet Life with Katie Sewell and Tiffany Parks. Hello, this is The Bittersweet Life. I'm Katie Sewell. I'm Tiffany Parks. And today we have a very special announcement. Tiffany, uh, <laughs> a very special announcement. <laughs> a big announcement. A big. An exciting announcement. <laughs> a very exciting announcement. Something we've never, ever, ever done before, which is is should i get a some sort of drum roll going here i should have like <laughs> thought about getting some pencils i could hit against my desk we are going to be taking this october the very first and possibly only ever bittersweet life trip to rome with 10 of our very lucky listeners just 10 just 10 we're talking a small happy delighted group 10 listeners, and each listener can bring a guest. That's right. A friend, a family member, a partner. Yes. Yep. We've reserved 10 rooms. And the idea of like keeping it to 10 is that we really want this to be a very intimate experience, one where you can, if you're there with us, you can get to know Tiffany and I. We're going to be taking you on a, a walking tour five mornings in a row. And, you know, with a bigger group, we just don't want to end up being like one of those major tour groups in Rome where like Tiffany has to hold a flag in the air so that you can see her way off in the distance. I will not hold a flag. I refuse <laughs> yeah. to hold a flag. Right. We want the group to be um, intimate. We want to be able to actually get to know each other and have a really good time touring Rome. And um, just to put us in the right mood, Tiffany, to really introduce this idea... You might remember, if you've been a long-time listener to this show, that during the height of the pandemic, when we were all feeling a little uh, stuck in our houses, that we took you on a virtual walking tour of Rome, where Tiffany and I pretended to be walking around on the streets of Rome. Meanwhile, I just was editing in a whole bunch of sound effects of from various actual places in Rome to create the illusion <laughs> that we were walking around Rome. And we're going to just play a little, a little, just a taste of what that felt like to get you in the mood to walk around Rome. So let's take a listen. Let's start right in the center of it all. Let's start at the Pantheon. So here we are, right outside the Pantheon. Ah, light crowds, beautiful day. There's nothing really like seeing the Pantheon, especially when you see it for the first time. Whenever I take people on a tour, I always walk around the corner, um, down a side street, and approach the Pantheon around sort of a blind angle, so it just looms in front of you, because it's really quite big, as you can see, Katie, right in front of you. Yes. It's in a relatively, you know, the square we're standing in is relatively small compared to this enormous towering monument and of course the pantheon as many people know is the best preserved ancient monument in the world it was uh, completed in 126 AD wow. so really we're coming up on 1900 years of course there were other versions of the pantheon at least two that sat at the same spot but burned down uh, in fact the inscription that you can read you see that inscription up there yeah yeah it reads m agrippa L C cos tertium fecit, which basically means Marcus Agrippa, the son of Lucius, during his third time as consul, made this. But of course, Marcus Agrippa wasn't alive in 126 when this was built. He built the first pantheon back in the time of Augustus, around 17 BC. But Emperor Hadrian, who built this version, the permanent version of the pantheon, decided to maintain Agrippa's inscription out of respect and honor to him. It's a church now, but what was it originally? Yeah, well, originally the word pantheon, in fact, means temple to all gods. So it was a temple to multiple gods, and it is unusual because it is completely round, of course. And let's, hey, let's step inside. Now these doors right here are the original bronze doors of the pantheon. And it's great because you can just sort of touch them as you walk in and sort of feel the history within them. But look up at the oculus. Mm -hmm. 
that is really what people love about the Pantheon. I mean, just the ceiling, the dome and the ceiling all together. I mean, the ceiling is coffered. It's made of concrete. You know, the, the concrete was one of the great Roman inventions. And the coffered ceiling is it's so iconic that it, it's been copied and used in so many other places, most famously probably for Americans in the U.S. Capitol building in Washington, D.C., is a copy of the ceiling of the Pantheon. But of course here, the oculus, the central hole is open. It's just a big open hole there. And the light shines down. And you can see, I don't know if you can tell, but right now it's, it's really shining straight out the door. And that's because the day that we're taping this is actually, I don't know if you know this, Katie, the day we're taping this it, a couple days before air is April 21st. It's Rome's birthday today. Did you know that? I did. 2,773 years old. Yep. Is that right? That is exactly right. Good for you. And uh, the interesting thing is that if you go to the Pantheon on this date, which I always tried to do. And we're here now. Yeah, we're here now. And the sun shines straight out the doors on that particular day if you go around the middle of the day as we are right now. So is that why the birthday is that day? Or is that just a coincidence? No, I think that some people think that when they designed the Pantheon, they designed it in such a way that that would happen on the birthday of the city. That's amazing. I know, isn't it? It is really, really one of the most incredible buildings. And in fact, if you only had 15 minutes to spend in Rome, that would be the one building I would force everyone to go see. Yeah, I totally agree. Very, very true. Yeah, it's just as beautiful from the outside as from the inside. I mean, I feel like it's one of those places. Do go in if you can, but even if you can't go in, it's something. It's worth it just to see from the outside. Just because when do you see something so old, so perfectly maintained? And, and the reason, as you mentioned, it is a church now, and that's one of the reasons why it's in such great condition. It was because it was converted into a church in the darkest of the dark ages, you know, in, in I think 609 AD, in a time when temples were just being ransacked for their materials in Rome. And so it, because it became a church at that time, it was sort of off limits and it was maintained. I could go on for the whole length of our little tour just talking about the Pantheon, but we don't have time for that. But I will just say, look over there on the left and you can see through a plate of glass, Raphael's tomb. Raphael, of course, died this month 500 years ago. Yes, yes, sadly so. Yeah. And one of the things I also love about the Pantheon, for anybody who's been there or anyone who's planning to be there or is there with us right now, actually, is that so many artists, so many architects, so many thinkers, so many notable people all around the world have stood in front of that building and been inspired by it. And it really does feel to me like one of the links back through time for all of us. How many of us have stood in front of that building and been inspired in some way? It's, it's countless hordes of people by this time. It is true. Whew, all this talk, I really feel like we should move on before I get too moved. All right, let's move <laughs> on. Do you need some refreshment? Should we stop and get a coffee? I would love that. That would be great. Coincidentally, as luck would have it, we have one of Rome's very best cafes just around the corner. Um, so let's see if it's open. Okay. So I cut us off before we got really into the coffee shop. That's not to say that we won't be stopping by some coffee shops on this particular special trip to Rome. Tiffany, you've been thinking a lot about, you know, as our main tour guide for this grand adventure, you've been thinking a lot about where we might go. And I understand that the Pantheon is not on your list, regardless of everything we just learned just then. Yes. So tell us about it. Yes. I What I really want to do, and uh, I know you feel the same, is I want to share the secret Rome, the, the hidden Rome, the unexplored Rome. Now, not, I mean, it's not 100% hidden, of course. I don't know that there's any place in Rome that nobody has ever seen, but not just the average tourist, but I would say 75, 80, maybe more percent of people who come to Rome do not happen upon the places that I want to take you, the places that are so special, so just sometimes they're not even that far off the beaten track. Sometimes it's just a, a matter of going, knowing where to go, going down this little side street and around the corner and in the side door of this museum because the, the central door, they don't even allow people in anymore. And so you wouldn't even know that it's there to see an unbelievable 
optical illusion by Francesco Borromini, or knowing that on a certain day of the week, you can get into this amazing palace that otherwise is closed to the public and see some amazing frescoes or things like that. Taking the elevator, you know, knocking on the door of the nuns at Santa Cecilia and taking the elevator up to see those glorious medieval frescoes that are hidden behind the choir loft in that church, things like that. So that is what I think, I mean, I love more than anything else when it comes to taking people around Rome is showing them the hidden wonders. Of course, my other great passion about Rome, as you all know, is Caravaggio. So I will absolutely be devoting one entire morning to Caravaggio, taking everybody to the places that you can not only see his uh, some of his works of art, but also the places that he lived, the places that he worked, the places that he shopped, the places where he hung out and got in trouble and got arrested. It's, it's all part of his life. It's all part of who he is. And so I love I love following his footsteps, things like that. Yeah, and a great way to get to know just sort of the lives and minds and workings of artists around that time by getting to know Caravaggio as a person in the streets. That's not to say, however, that if you've never been to Rome before and you really want to see the Pantheon, oh, we'll tell you where to go. Yes. <laughs> we'll tell you how to find it and give you tips of what to do around there. Like, where's a good spot to eat if you're at the Pantheon and you're starving to death? We will uh, be giving you those tips. But in the mornings, we're going to be taking you to these these more hidden gems like Tiffany was talking about. I mean, there's so many things to talk about with this trip. And only 10 slots. But one of the other things I really like about what we're planning to do, we, I think, personally, because I think whenever I travel somewhere, I like to have a lot of free time. I like to have the day kind of divided up into like something I'm planning on doing in the day and then the time to sort of wander or nap or explore. So we're kind of giving you this something to do in the day. Every morning, we're going to go on a, a great tour together. But in the afternoons, we're going to let you adrift and do what you want, but we're not going to leave you adrift. We're coming up with basically little booklets, hidden guides, whatever you want to call it, that contain suggested itineraries for what you might want to do in the afternoon. And we'll also be giving you books of our favorite places to eat, our favorite places to get gelato, our favorite places to grab a drink, all those kinds of things that Tiffany sorted out by, what, 20 years of living in Rome and Almost. that I sorted out by following in your footsteps, mm -hmm. <laughs> following in your footsteps, really, and then creating my own ideas along the way. So, I mean, is there anything you want to add to that? Yeah. Well, also, for, for this, particularly for those who are coming for the first time, now everybody has their own travel style. Katie likes to sort of mix it up, some stuff planned time to explore and get lost. Uh, other people want to spend their entire time getting lost. Other people want their entire time to be structured. So if you are one of those people, and let's say this is your first time in Rome, maybe your only time in Rome, and you're like, I want to see the Colosseum and the, and the Vatican and this and that and the other, we are also happy to set you up with private guides of those sites for your afternoon hours. I have a great network of tour guides who do those sites. And I am more than able to help you out with that, help you get hooked up with them and get your tickets and stuff like that. So that is an option. It's not something that is included, but it's something that we can do for you. We can provide this concierge service for you. So that's, I think, I think that's exciting. And, and yeah, I think that we're going to include enough options for these suggested itineraries that you can mix and match and say, this sounds like something I'd like to do. This sounds like something I can skip. You know, it's totally up to you. You follow, or if you don't want to do anything, you know, just, and just prefer to wander. That's, I mean, your time in the afternoon is yours. And we're definitely going to chalk it full with restaurant suggestions in many different neighborhoods and particularly in the neighborhood where the hotel is, which I think really deserves all, I think we're almost burying the lead here because the hotel, I think is one of the biggest draws of this trip. The hotel is Donna Camilla Savelli, which is an absolute jewel. It is itself a hidden gem of Rome, really. It's a converted monastery. It's still technically a working monastery. There are a few elderly nuns left who live in one wing of the building. But it's a monastery that was built by Francesco Borromini, my favorite architect. And 
It has been converted into this gorgeous four-star hotel. I happen to have gotten married there. I mean, the ceremony wasn't there, but the party was there. So I do have a special place in my heart for it. It's just absolutely beautiful. It's a lot of the rooms have period furnishings. There's a gorgeous courtyard in the middle with just every kind of plant and flower you could imagine and fountains. And that's where breakfast is served on nice days. And breakfast, of course, is included, by the way. And we will be hanging out with you at breakfast time as well before heading out for our morning tour. And yeah, I mean, it's really a lovely, lovely place. If you don't believe me, Google it. Hotel Dona Camila Savelle, you'll see how how gorgeous it is. It's in Trastevere, which is just the most vibrant neighborhood in Rome. It's so quaint, so characteristic, and it's not as crowded with tourists as many other parts of the city. There are tourists there. I'm not going to say that it's it's free of tourists, but it's a big step down from the Navona area, the Pantheon area. You'll feel more like you're in a small medieval Italian town. Yeah. And if that isn't convincing enough about that hotel, I haven't even told you this, Tiffany. So <clears throat> the author, Pulitzer Prize winning author, Anthony Doerr, who wrote the book, All the Light We Cannot See, he was also on this show talking about storytelling, and he uh, recently did a book called Cloud Cuckoo Land. Anyway, I told him about the hotel that we were going to be doing this adventure in, and he sent me back a short story that he wrote that was inspired by that hotel wow. when he was in Trastevere. That is random. I know. So if you're a big Anthony Doerr fan... All the Light We Cannot See fan, which I know a lot of you are. Just know that this hotel was remarkable enough that the author of that book that you love felt compelled to write something about it. Wow. And you know that his writing is often quite magical in its form and style. And so, yeah, I mean, just another thing to recommend it. That's all I'm saying. I was impressed to find that out. It also has a rooftop terrace with an unbelievable 360 degree view of Rome. And we are kicking off this almost week because it is six nights, uh, this almost week adventure with a aperitivo with us up on that terrace with Prosecco and finger foods in the twilight of Rome. And early October is still warm enough to do that in Rome. And it is going to be absolutely magical. Yes. And one other thing, if you're a big fan of the show, this is also your chance to sort of uh, see the show in action. We're going to be doing an episode live in front of you where you can participate in the episode if you wish. You can also do one-on-one -on -one interviews or two-on-one -on -one interviews with me if you want while we're there. And I don't know, Tiffany, I haven't totally mapped it out yet, but you and I are going to be recording some episodes in the streets, no doubt, during this period of time. So I'll probably be occasionally on our tours, be carrying around my microphone, and you can see me like doing all the crazy things we've talked about in this show where I just start recording the men collecting the trash or the sound of the fountain. I love it when you stick the microphone down to the surface of the fountain and the Romans look at you like you are mad. <laughs> and in a way, I am in that beautiful radio mad that I uh, so appreciate. So yes, it's going to be kind of a whole rich experience, plenty of time for yourself, plenty of time exploring the city. And I just want to say like the, one of the very first things I ever did after moving to Rome way back in 2013 was I just went on one, just one walking tour with Tiffany, probably in the first few days. And that one tour alone expanded my understanding of the city I, I don't even know how to quantify it. <laughs> it not only oriented me, but it, it just, um, it made me feel like I under started to understand, by the way, started to understand the rich layers of history that happened in this ancient city all the way up to this modern city that's still there living on these ancient lands. And I just feel like in five days, you'll go away with the, such an understanding of Rome and Roman history and how it affected the rest of the world and how it came to be so opulent. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm thrilled for myself to be able to go on <laughs> five days of tours with you. <laughs> and I just, I think it's just going to be such a wonderful, we're all going to walk away with such a wonderful understanding of 
one of the most singular places in the world. Well, thank you for that. A place so singular, by the way, that we've done 10 years worth of episodes, <laughs> not just about the city of Rome, but centered around the city of Rome. So let's just get to the nitty gritty details. And I, I just want to say, um, if you're interested in this idea, if this sounds like something you want to jump on board, get one of the remaining rooms that we have, because we've already sold quite a few of the rooms to longtime supporters of the show, people who have been around and supported us since the very beginning. We gave them first dibs on this. And so we're not just starting with 10 rooms here. We're starting with way fewer than 10 rooms. So if this sounds like something you really want to do, send us an email to bittersweetlifepodcast at gmail.com. That's bittersweetlifepodcast at gmail.com. If you are already on our email list because you get our newsletter, you probably already heard about this or you will hear about this today and there'll be like all the details laid out for you. But yes, if you did not get that email, send us an email and let us know. This trip is happening in October 2023, currently slated for October 8th through the 14th. So those are the dates. That is Sunday, starting Sunday, October 8th, and checking out on Saturday, October 14th. That's right. That's when... Tiffany and I have already put a lot of our money down to reserve these rooms to make sure we get into this hotel. So that is the week that we're doing this. And for all other details, I guess send us an email, bittersweetlifepodcast at gmail.com. In there, we'll not only tell you pricing, payment schedule, but we will lay out everything we've talked about and even things we haven't mentioned that are included in this possibly once in a lifetime adventure with the bittersweet life celebrating 10 years nearly 10 years of this show well yeah you know what katie i was thinking about when we were writing some of this up is that you moved to rome in the fall of 2013 that's right and we're doing this in the fall of 2023 so even though the podcast didn't officially start airing until early 2014 it really had its beginnings that fall. And we started thinking about it and talking about it and even recording the first few episodes in late 2013. So it really is a 10 year anniversary of the show. Wow. And a, definitely a 10 year anniversary of your moving to Rome. Wow, crazy. How interesting. Almost the 10th anniversary, probably a little bit more than the 10th anniversary, 10th anniversary from when you first gave me that tour. <laughs> yeah, but not much. A few weeks, a few weeks after. That remarkable tour that uh, started off this remarkable journey that not only has led us all over Rome, but has led us to meeting all of you, which has been great. And we look forward to seeing 10 of you and your friends in person in Rome in early October. Bittersweetlifepodcast at gmail.com. That's where you can email us to say, yes, ma'am, count me in, sign me up. <laughs> Let me know how to do it. Okay, I'm excited. I'm going to have to go drink some water or something. <laughs> <laughs> ah. All right, well, we should, we should leave it there. And until next time, this is The Bittersweet Life. I'm Katie Sewell. I'm Tiffany Barks. Join us again. Bye. Bye.